Hey, this is Kyle at Projection Hub, and today I'm going to show you how to create a business plan for a laundromat. Now, what I'm going to show you here is a completely free template that you can go ahead and grab. It's down in the description of the video, no strings attached. And what I'm going to do in this video is actually going to walk through this entire business plan. I'm not going to write it for you in front of you, but I am going to, to show you all the structure of the business plan, what's included, that it's filled out with a fictitious example, and I will stop and highlight five key points that especially if you're planning on getting funding or a loan for your laundromat that are going to really make the difference of your business plan. Now, who is Projection Hub? We've helped more than 50,000 uh, small businesses and founders create financial projections for their loan applications, for their business plans, for their pitch decks. And, and actually before that, myself personally, I was a small business lender for about seven years at an SBA micro lender and got a chance to review thousands of business plans and work with businesses to refine their business plans, including some laundromats. So have some experience looking at these. And now this, again, I, I said, I'll, I'll go through this and stop and highlight those five key points that are really going to make your business plan shine for a potential lender that might be reviewing it. So if at any point you appreciate this video, like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That really helps us as a fellow small business. You can also subscribe to the channel if you'd like. Not all of our content is related to a laundromat, but in general advice for running a business, growing a business and some tips to keep in mind. So we'd invite you to, to join the channel. Again, this is linked, this template or this free business plan template is linked down the template. And let's go ahead and jump into things. So why is your business plan important? Maybe it's an obvious question, or maybe a little bit of a cliche answer. But the job of your business plan is not to educate your lender. Now, if it was a more novel industry, then maybe you would need to do that. But your lender will understand what a laundromat is, what's the key aspects of a laundromat. So you should be focused more on making sure that your business plan demonstrates your specific path to success. We're trying to give the lender confidence that you have your path charted out and you have a high degree of likelihood that you're going to succeed. And now, as I start to scroll through this a little bit, you're going to see here in this table of contents that it is not necessarily a long business plan. Now, it's a myth that people think long business plan equals good business plan. And I can tell you almost the opposite is true. When I was a lender, if someone handed me a 40 or 50 page business plan, I would you know, take a deep breath and probably not read all of it <laughs> because that's just a, a time consuming thing to do. And now, what I would say to you is if you feel like you need to write that long of a business plan to feel like you have a good plan in place and get all your thoughts down and really work through that, definitely do that as an exercise for yourself. But what you deliver to a lender should be a refined version of that. We're talking 15 pages, 20 pages, because it can actually hurt you if it's too long. All of the good information, you're going to pack the best information into the shortest business plan you can. And if it's much longer than that, the good details will start to get hidden and, and muddied up by other stuff that may not be as important. And so that's a point there that I would, that's not one of the five key points, but it's a, a bit of extra bonus advice. So let's get into things here. Initially, we have our executive summary. Think about this as like a cover letter to a resume for a job application. And right here, you're just hitting some of the high points that are relevant to the industry. You could, this example doesn't include it, but you can include some like high level financial aspects, like your total startup funds, but you want to include like the, the who, what, where, type information. And you'll see down here in your company description, it's an extension of that. Some of the, the structure of the company itself, target market. So all of this information, executive summary, company description is important. It's necessary, but it's not going to make the difference um, in you getting a loan. It, it could hurt you if you don't include it, but it's not going to win you anything. So just put some good information in there. And I should mention the structure of this template. You have the, the subheadings, a quick description as to what should be included in that section. And then a one or two sentence example for a fictitious example that we're talking about, which is the laundry lounge. Okay. So you're going to probably want a little bit more information than that than what you're going to see in here, but it's just a placeholder to give you some context as to what's supposed to go in there that if you get this as a Google doc, you can edit right here on the page to give you some guidance while you're doing that. So keep moving through here into market analysis. And this is actually going to bring us to key point number one which in the business plan template, we've made that really obvious. So it sticks out. We've even included some examples, but I'm going to do a live example for you here on some ways to do this. So what should your market, what is the market analysis? This is where we want to demonstrate that there is room in the market for our laundromat. Again, laundromat is not a novel concept. So we want to make sure we demonstrate that, Hey, where we want to put our laundromat, it makes sense. There's room for it to operate there. We're going to demonstrate that with as much tangible evidence and examples as we can. You don't, you definitely want to avoid with your business plan ever getting the 
you never want to infer if we build it, people will come because we just know it's good. We want to demonstrate that it's going to be good. And so we're going to do that. And if we demonstrate that it is a tight market and it's competitive, then we need to demonstrate what is our secret sauce with our competitive advantage? What are we going to do to disrupt the market enough to get enough customers to actually be successful? So you'll see here in a an overview of maybe the industry. And this isn't like the national industry. This is like the local industry. You can give an overview, maybe a, a state of things, you know, saying that it's thriving, it's worth population, et cetera, some competitor analysis. So what I would encourage you to do is you should know every laundromat that exists in a five to 10 mile radius of yours. You don't need to list those in your business plan, but you want to understand what they offer. Is it coin service? Are they doing dry cleaning? Is it, you know, what kind of specialties do they have? What are their price ranges? Do they have a good reputation? Do they have good reviews, bad reviews? Because that can give you some insight as to what do you want to do really well? And who can you maybe steal some of the market from? And then demonstrate that. So of course you could do a, a market study. You could order a market research report. If you have that budget that you're working with, even Projection Hub, we can offer market research. So if you're interested in that, please contact us, but I'm not going to pitch you that here. I'm going to show you ways you can do this on your own for free. And some things I have pulled up here first, Go to Google, to your location, do a search. Even if you live in your target location, you probably don't know it as well as you think you do when it comes to all of the laundromats that are out there. Okay, so get a get a good feel of what exists. Even though if it feels like a lot of homework, you should look at every one of these. You should visit them. You should understand them. Find out what do you like or don't like about different ones, their equipment, their etc. So do that. Can condense that information into something useful to put in your business plan. They're saying, I've picked this location and the four closest laundromats are this and this, and here's what I think that they don't do well, that we can do better and et cetera. That's what gives you your lender some exam examples that you know exactly what you're talking about. That you're an expert on the area that you want to open your laundromat. Second thing I would do, another free tool. If you create a Google AdWords account, which is free, you don't have to set up any ads. There is a Google keyword planner tool. So now what I'm doing here, as you can see, I've set my location I want to analyze as Anaheim, California. Because if you're just saying, I'm opening a laundromat in Los Angeles, okay, Los Angeles is huge. So not everyone in Los Angeles is going to be a customer. But so try to drill that down a little bit. Even Anaheim is going to be probably too big. If you can get even smaller than that to a suburb, that's probably even better. But we're going to use Anaheim as an example. And I'm typing in laundromat near me. And it's taking this as if like I was in Anaheim and I was searching that on my phone. Okay. And we'll start to see what we see here. And another good thing about this, especially if you want to do a website and work on SEO and that kind of stuff, this will give you some good, some keyword phrases you should try to compete for. But it's going to give me all these different details. So I can see 1300 people a month in, Anah in Anaheim are searching that. Now don't take this numbers and like, that's the only people there that are searching for laundry. Of course, not everyone is searching for that every time they need a laundromat. But these could be new customers. So keep that in mind. And what I'm more focused on is this trend data. Three month change, 0%. It's the same year over year, it's up 23%. Now let's keep looking for this. Laundry near me up 22%, laundry service up 40%, coin laundry up 88%, 24 hour laundry map up 22%, wash and fold. So this is giving you an example of not only people, yes, there's room, they're growing, the need is growing, there's demand for it, but also services. People are talking about specific services that are even in here that can give you a, some insight into maybe what would be good to include in your business. And so this can be a good demonstration of, yes, I do think there's demand. Grab snapshots from this, put that in your business plan. That can be helpful. Now, if you do this and the numbers don't look good, maybe it's minus 20%, minus 40%, that might be a, an indicator that it's a little bit saturated or there's not a growing demand for new laundromats or people looking for laundromats in your area. So that's when you need to shift into market disruption mode. What are we going to do? Who are we identifying that we're going to steal market share from? What are we going to do better? Are we going to be the Chick-fil-A of laundromats? and offer the best service ever. And that's what you need to do and pivot that a little differently. So that's your market analysis. There are some free ways to do some research. Just make sure you are the expert of your laundromat and how it's gonna really make the difference. Again, you can see some of these examples, keyword research, review customer, competitor reviews. You can order, you can do a survey, all that stuff. Okay, moving on to marketing and sales strategy. Okay, so you're gonna see some basic stuff here that you should absolutely include products and services, your pricing, your sales strategy, your distribution channel, promotion, advertising, you should have a website, you should be on social channels, like those are all givens, you should do advertising. That should be included, okay? But that's not the key point. Key point number two is we wanna demonstrate 
customer acquisition. So we've already demonstrated that the market exists or that it's competitive or whatever it is in your case. Now we need to demonstrate how are we actually gonna get those customers in the door? And there's a term that's used often in the tech world, tech space called traction. And that is when someone is launching a new website or software or app, what metrics can they demonstrate that it's starting to get momentum, right? So maybe when their app is in beta, if they've got 100,000 downloaders, that's demonstrating that there's interest and people are actually using it. Same concept applies here. And the reason we wanna include this in the business plan is because this can go the extra mile to give our lender the proof that we're willing to hustle, that we're actually, we're trying, we're not just gonna open it and assume people are gonna show up. And so here you can get a little creative, get a little bit creative on what does that actually mean? So the best type of tractions to demonstrate are sales. So if anything's making money before launch, which I'll explain that, and two is names, people signed up, people that are interested. And so let's look at some of these examples. Collect a list of individuals before you launch to give a founder's discount. So maybe you start letting people in the area, hey, we're gonna open up a laundromat. People, people you, your kids go to school with, maybe you, people you go to a community group with or a church with or whatever, you start building a list and say, for the first year, I'm gonna give the Founders Club a 25% off on all of our laundry services or whatever. Start building that interest so when the, the day comes that you open, there's gonna be people there that are actually gonna do the laundry. Collaborate with local hotels and Airbnbs. Now, some of these examples might be things that are harder to do before you launch, but are still worth including nonetheless. Excuse me. A referral program, a grand opening. If you're, maybe you start offering a takeaway laundry service at home for some people in the area and start building an initial customer base. So it, laundromat is one of those industries that maybe it's a little tricky to, to have a lot of examples of like pre-launch or pre-revenue traction, but anything you can do to demonstrate that's an idea or a thing that you are already doing to get momentum, build, get names on a list, get the word out about that, all that kind of stuff, a social media following, all of that, include that in here. That is a good demonstrator of real world momentum for your lender. So that's key point number two. Moving on to operations and management. So this can be about the facility and how the business operates itself. All these things are important, how it's gonna be staffed. Are you gonna have people there? Is it gonna be someone comes and puts a pin in and they can get themselves in the, in the facility or however that's gonna work. <clears throat> but key point number three in this section is going to be relevant industry experience. This is not to dunk on the laundromat, but it's not the most complex industry. And so it isn't necessarily probably a requirement that you've learned a laundromat before or something like that, but it is important to highlight what relevant experience you have or your team has that you know what you're getting yourself into. So if it's not laundromats, have you operated a retail space before? Have you had to grow a business through advertising before? So your lender is going to want to know that you at least have something relevant to offer and not that like you've been a an accountant for 25 years, right? Okay, so there's obviously some important helpful things that if you've been in an accountant that will help you in running a business, but just managing the store and all of that stuff might be trickier. So just here you wanna give your lender some validation or some confidence that you know what you're doing, you know what you're getting yourself into. Okay, so moving on from that, this is the big section, financial plan, financial projections. Now. Obviously we're a little bit biased here at Projection Hub. What we do is help businesses create financial projections. But even before my time at Projection Hub, when I was a lender, financial projections were still the most part, important part of the business plan. That's where we spent most of our time reviewing it and making a lending decision based upon that. Personal financials was one key point and then projections was the other key point. And so I'm gonna show you some details here. You can see we've got startup costs highlighted, how that's gonna be broken down. We've got a breakdown of some revenue projections. You can see a quick snapshot of like a miniature PL right here. Um, when this screenshot was taken, obviously those columns weren't big enough, but I'll show you a real example here shortly. We got some key ratio data here, operating expenses. If you have like rent and all that stuff, that could be would be helpful to know that. A five year income statement or pro forma statement projection here. We've got five years of cash flow projections break even chart for like sales growth. So quick shameless plug, all of those charts were made using this projection template. So this was built by CPA. And so to give people the ability to create projections from the self without having to pay an accountant thousands of dollars. So this has been used by 
many laundromats up to this point in time. Like I said, we've helped 50,000 businesses create projections. Not all of those were laundromats, but it's pretty simple. You come in here and you just fill in the blue boxes, right? You have your launch in your laundromat. Maybe you have an investment. What types of things are you going to need to purchase? Maybe this would be washing machines, drying machines. This actually gives you the ability to project multiple facilities, but if you're just going to have one location, that's okay. You can just remove all of these and just have one line item and you can see it's gonna have 40 units in it. So you can project out, maybe you're starting with one, but you wanna end up with five units. You can do that in this template. You'll put in when the that unit is opening, how many units there are, maximum number of revenue, utility cost, insurance costs, etc. Pretty easy inputs. You're gonna put in your expenses. If you have any salaried employees, those would go in here. And that's gonna generate all of those charts and financial statements for you that I had showed you in the business plan. I pulled them directly from this template and get the monthly breakdown of each of the cash flow balance sheet income statement. So that's just a quick shameless plug. I'll link that down in the description. If you hang around to the end of the video, I'll even give you a discount code if you are interested in getting that. So all that needs to be included. If you are starting up from scratch, you're gonna need financial projections. You may not need five years of projections, but you'll probably at least need two or three years. So five years is conservative. And pro financial projections are not key point number four, actually though. What the key point number four, because you need to have projections. But the fourth key point is they need to be realistic. So maybe you would say, like, how am I supposed to know if they're going to be realistic? Easy answer, go back to Google again. Okay, so I'm going to bring back up my set of projections that I had made, and I'm going to look for some key things, right? So any one of these terminal terms, I can go and search for what an industry typical average or range would be. So maybe I'm curious, and what is a typical profit margin for a laundromat? I already had done that search, and let's say... They have a 80% gross margin. Okay, so that's gross and not net. Mm -hmm. Let's see, 20% ROI, profit margin of 20 to 35%. Okay, so <clears throat> again, I didn't open any of those articles and like scan them to make sure that they were really reliable sources, but I was just doing a quick one. So you can see first year is gonna be, obviously for any business, it's gonna be rough, capital intensive, but you can see we got up into that range, 28%, 30%. So that's within range. And that gross profit margin said that could get up to 80%. We're at 60, 68%. So we're not way in left field, which is good. So I would do that same type of exercise for things like revenue. You can see here, there's a percentage. <clears throat> That's another good search to do is what is a typical operating ex expense, percentage of operating expenses for a laundromat. Make sure that you're not spending more than you need to or planning to spend way less than you probably will need to. Um, so that's a quick demonstration of just how to make sure your projections can be realistic. Your lender is working on lots of different businesses, so they're not gonna be the laundromat expert. They're not gonna have the sheet and paper in front of them and say like, what's your number? This makes sure it's specific. But they're gonna be looking for things that stand out to them that don't make sense. So they might have some industry benchmarks to be aware of. And so just be mindful of some of those things like, this is another tech term, but burn rate, for example, if you're gonna be operating at a loss, how much cash do you have to cover those losses until you need to break even? Industry averages for revenue, profit margin, uh, they are going to be looking, they're going to be calculating a thing called debt service coverage ratio. And they want to see that to be 1.2 or higher. That's basically just an analysis of for every dollar and 20 cents in free cash flow, maybe you have a dollar in debt payments. So they want to see that you're going to be making enough to actually be able to operate your business and cover your debt payment. So just being on top of that and making sure it's realistic. So now that's key point number four, and that's pretty much going to bring us down through the end of our projections because you have an appendix here, but there's one more key point, and that is demonstrating skin in the game. Now, what is skin in the game? Think about this as like mutual risk. When you're buying a house, someone's buying a house and you say you go to the bank and you're like, I wanna buy a house, I want a $300,000 mortgage or loan. And they might say, okay, great. How much are you gonna put down as a down payment? You wanna see 10% or 20% you're like, okay, yeah, I'll put down $30,000 or $60,000 in the house. And they say, okay, great, here's your loan but we're still gonna hold a lien on the house. So if you would default on that loan, A, you would lose your down payment that you put in, and B, you're gonna lose the house because the bank is, has a lien on that. Very similar concept for a business loan. A lot of advice, of people, when I was a lender, people would say they received the advice to keep their business and personal separate, which is really great advice when it comes to bookkeeping and accounting. When it comes to like lending and financing, that is a very unrealistic expectation your lender is going to want to see that you are committed both professionally and personally as much as necessary to secure them. So if you're asking for a $100,000 business loan to make it easy, 
your lender is going to say, okay, great, we'll give you 80,000, but we want you to put in 20,000 of that. So your lender is gonna to wanna to see that you are willing to basically secure that, right? So they're gonna to wanna to see you to have a percentage of investment or down payment into that. But then they're also gonna need collateral. So with a laundromat, it's great. So if you're buying the building and you have all this equipment in there, that's your collateral. If you're renting the building, then your equipment will still have some collateral, but it's probably not gonna cover as much of the loan you need. So you might be prepared to need to have some personal collateral, a free and clear vehicle, a second mortgage on your house. And I know that makes a lot of people uncomfortable, but it is just the reality that like lenders, they want to mitigate their risk and they want to be confident that there's a high degree of likelihood that the loan's gonna repay and they can have some confidence in doing that. So that's key point number five. Again, this business plan link is available for free down in the description. And as promised, if you do want to get the financial projections, I will give you probably already saw it, but here's a discount code PH 20 BP will get you 20% off of that template. The template is already less than hundred dollars. I think it was even only like $79 before that, which is a whole lot cheaper than if you would pay an accountant to do that. And if you have any questions about the template or filling the template out, email us at support at projectionhub.com. And we'd be happy even to review your projections for free if you need that help. So thanks.